All right, so I hopped off the In 600 meters, turn left onto Lakeshore Avenue. <laughs> Do that again. The Toronto Islands is a group of 15 islands uh, just south of the mainland in Lake Ontario. Today it is home to the Billy Bishop Airport, a few yacht clubs, uh, an amusement park and a few other things but that wasn't always the case. Uh, it is however known as the largest urban community in North America with, which is car free so you can ride or you can walk there and today I'm gonna check it out on my bike. So, let's go! Looks like the Centerville Amusement Park and the farm are closed for the year. That's not good news for families. Lots of Canada geese around. This is the main bridge that connects to the center island. Ward's Island is to our left. I've gotta tell you, it is a beautiful day. Not too hot since I'm riding. You know, wind in my face. First stop, Island Church. From what I understand, the St. Andrew Church was built in 1884 in a different location as a place of worship for the island dwellers, which at the time were some of the richest families of Toronto. After being sold to the City Parks Department, the building was moved to this location in 1959. It's a cool building. I love the stained glass windows. Since this is the only church on the island, it is shared by the Catholics and the Anglicans. On the other side of the church, you have this little dock. Lots of yachts and uh, if you are walking, suggest exercise and caution. These boards look like they could give way any time. I mean, check that out. Time to head back. Off we go. All right, let's check out the Yacht Club. Ridge limit is 14 tons. I think I'm okay even with all the lockdown weight. And it's private property. Time to head back. Well, I probably won't get shot since this is Canada, but why risk it, right? And this is the Wards Island Ferry Dock. Lots of Muskoka chairs around. I wonder what's the deal with the sandbags around it. Which brings us to our next stop, the Wards Hotel. The Wards Island was named after the Ward family who moved here in 1830. William Ward, who was a local hero, he saved hundreds of people from drowning, built the landmark Wards Hotel here on this property. The building was demolished in 1966 and now stands in its place this cafe called the Island Cafe. Looks like this place has seen better days as well. Fun fact, the Toronto Islands were not always islands. There was a narrow strip of land connecting Wards Island to the other side that we know as Cherry Beach today. 
and in 1858, a violent storm knocked out that piece of land, thus creating the islands. On Ward's Island, you will see a lot of houses. This used to be the original cottage country of the rich and the famous, and today, it's a mixed bag. There are some properties that are maintained beautifully, while others lay in ruins. After a decades-long battle between the residents and the government, the Toronto Islands Residential Community Trust was set up in 1993, which finally gave the owners clear title to their property for 99 years. There's a long waiting list in case you're interested in buying. I hear homes are in the range of $400,000 to $800,000. Okay, now we're heading to Snake Island. Quick pit stop before we head to Hanlon's Point. All right, let's go. Snake Island is clearly not the most tourist-friendly spot on the islands. And this is uh, Snake Island. It's a tiny island, not a lot to do here. Another view of the skyline, but other than that, pretty much barren it's very sandy it's uh if you're a girl guide or a boy scout you can have uh, you can get permission to scout permission to scout <laughs> you can get permission to camp overnight and things like that but for the uh other than that i think this is the only part of the island where anybody can get permission to camp overnight so that's snake island all right here we go Now it's starting to get a little tiring, but it's fun, it's a fun day, it's a great day to be out for sure. It looks like the bike rentals are closed, so yeah, good call on bringing the bike. Central Island is without doubt the biggest tourist spot, so also the best views. Like it's got this awesome like pier kind of thing, so that's cool. Look at that. It's crazy. Hey guys. Nobody cares. Woo! The whole family's here. All right, off we go to Hanlon's Point. Ah, look at that blue water. So clear. And it's quite shallow for quite a distance. So it's safe even for kids. The Gibraltar Point Lighthouse is an interesting one. It's supposed to be haunted by its first keeper. Local folklore has it that the first keeper, J.P. Rattlemuller, had a little side business making illegal beer, and on the stormy evening of January 2nd, 1815, two soldiers from Fort York came looking for the beer and in the ensuing fight, killed J.P. and hit his body. Is the story true? Your guess is as good as mine. Okay, so the dock, I went to the dock at uh, Hanlon's Point and it looks like the next ferry is only in an hour or so. So I'm gonna give that a miss and uh, head back to Center Island. I think there is a ferry in about half an hour or so. I'm gonna head over there and uh, hop on that. Clothing optional beach. Okay, let's give that a miss for sure. And that brings us to the end of my bike tour of the Toronto Islands. That was a great day. If you haven't done it, I'd suggest you try it once. That's all for now. See you guys in the next one.